You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. Time now is 646. We're helping you get out the door with 11 minutes of nonstop news, weather and traffic. All right, here's what we're following for you this morning. Gunshots at a Cobb County apartment complex. What we're learning about this deadly shooting. More postal problems stemming from the Palmetto USPS Center. We are pushing to get you answers. Howard Georgia Congressman is trying to get to the bottom of the problem. There'll be plenty of sunshine around this afternoon and temperatures will be warming up back into the 70s this afternoon. But how long will it last? I'll let you know coming up. First this morning, we are staying on top of breaking news. One person is dead after a double shooting. It happened in Cobb County, really close to the Cumberland area. Ariana Manese has been following the developments all morning. Good morning, Ariana. Good morning, Aisha and Cheryl. We spoke to detectives at the scene, and they tell us that two people were shot. One of the victims has died. The other victim is here at Wellstar Kennestone Hospital. Now, this is video from when we were at the scene. Comp County Police, they tell us that this all happened at Gables Mill Apartments. Now, when they arrived, they found two victims with gunshot wounds. We also saw the Cobb County Police Department's major crimes unit. They were also at the scene investigating exactly what happened. They do tell us at this time that there's no danger to the public regarding the shooting. Now, as of right now, it's unclear if they have named any suspects or if they made any arrests or the extent of the victim's injuries who is here at the hospital this morning. Cobb County Police tell us that they plan to provide more updates later on this morning. Back to you. Thank you, Ariana. I'm Liza Lucas, and there are new calls for answers about missing mail linked to a postal facility in Palmetto. I spoke with U.S. Representative Mike Collins, who says operations cannot continue running at this pace. Collins previously led a charge about missing and misdelivered mail and the Postal Service's failure to respond to complaints with action. Basically, what we got back was a seven-page form letter. Uh, I could have cut and pasted it probably from their manual. Representative Collins says he now wants to see firsthand what is happening inside that Palmetto facility, and he's asked for a one-on-one -on -one with the Postmaster General. We are pushing for transparency from the Postal Service, but you can help us out. If you are dealing with mail problems or happen to even work at the Palmetto facility, let us know. You can email us at postalproblems at 11alive.com. Liza, thanks. That was a look at your Wednesday morning headlines. Chesley, maybe a light jacket sweater on the way out the door this morning? Yeah, at least for this morning. I think by this afternoon you're going to want to take that off as temperatures will begin to heat up. Let's look at these pollen counts. They've been on the high side last couple of days. In fact, yesterday was the same. We got up to 520. That is considered high. Extremely high would be 1,500. Haven't been up there that high yet. I think we got up to 1,200 the day before. So uh, we'll see it get that high and even exceed that, I'm sure. Weeds were on the medium side, low for mold. But once that rain starts to come back, I think the mold will start to go up on, on us. Just a little bit there. You're looking at temperatures in the 30s and 40s out there as well. So not as chilly of a start as we've had the last couple of days. Been watching to see if temperatures would get below the freezing mark or at the freezing mark over here to the west. That's where we have temperatures close, like the range at 33, 35 right now in Georgia's Rome. Dalton, you're at 33 degrees. Blairsville already below the average at 28, way up there. 71 degrees for your afternoon high temperature. Again, if you start off with the sweater, I think you're going to be fine for the day. Again, as temperatures will be warming up to around 71 degrees for the afternoon high. West winds about 10 miles per hour or less will make it feel on the pleasant side. You notice a few clouds back off to the west. High pressure's down here to the south, so we're in that westerly flow. So some of those clouds will make it in here later on this afternoon, but not rob us too much from our sunshine. We have a surplus as far as our rainfall goes. Uh, we've had a little over uh, 17 and quarter inches. We should be just over 12 inches, so we're just over five inches as far as rainfall in the bucket. You know, and so we can use these dry days, right? Today, tomorrow, dry. Rain comes back to us as we head into Friday. Day. In fact, forecast track model will show that the clouds will increase briefly this afternoon, but really will start to increase on our Thursday, especially by the afternoon going into the evening. Mostly cloudy skies going to start you off there on Friday. Chance for a shower could happen at any time, but a little bit more likely once we get to the afternoon, a little bit more widespread and the rain could be heavy in some spots on Friday as well. A bit cooler down to the 50s on Friday. Back up to 65 degrees on Saturday. We'll have the rain around early in the morning, and then by the afternoon, we'll start to clear out, get the sunshine back in here for the latter half of the weekend with 68 for the high. That's where we should be for this time of year. A man convicted of killing his girlfriend in Spalding County will be put to death today. The Georgia Parole Board denied clemency for Willie James Pye on Tuesday. Today, Pye will become the first person executed in more than four years in Georgia. Lawyers argue Pye should not be executed because he is developmentally disabled and feels remorse. The execution is set for 7 o'clock tonight in Jackson. 
This morning, a staff member with the Atlanta Public Schools District is under investigation, accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a student. Right now, details are limited, but we know the staff member worked at Booker T. Washington High School. A statement from the district says the staff member is on administrative leave as they investigate. APS says the safety and well-being of all students and staff will always be a top priority. Former Clayton County Sheriff Victor Hill no longer in prison this morning. His transfer comes less than a year after he was sent to a federal facility in Arkansas. We're told he's now in community confinement. That means he's either under house arrest or at a halfway house. Hill was convicted in 2022 of violating inmates' civil rights. Prosecutors say he ordered inmates be strapped into restraint chairs for hours. Hill was sentenced to 18 months in prison. This morning, we are following up with concerns from students at Georgia State University about feeling safe on campus. A third shooting incident near the campus in the last month happened on Monday night on Edgewood at Piedmont Avenue. Students tell us they thought the racetrack gas station on Piedmont was the problem, but it shut down a few weeks ago. Students say they're uneasy because they're becoming used to the shootings near campus. I just wish it wasn't so normalized for us. It's like something we have to like just be okay and like learn to live with. But it shouldn't be like that on a college campus. We should feel safe getting an education. Chief Anthony Coleman said there are more uh, security improvements coming, like more lighting, more cameras and upgrades to secure the campus buildings. The Atlanta Girls School will shut its doors for the final time on May 24th. The historic Buckhead School has around 200 students from 60 different zip codes. Officials posted on their website that after exploring many options, their board of trustees decided to close the doors. Online, the school cites financial troubles and a decrease in demand for single gender education. Alumni are reflecting on how the school changed their lives. It's being able to grow and to get those moments of, okay, this is who I am, this is who I want to be. I can mess up, I can fail, I can try again. And being able to develop, right, I learned confidence there, right? I learned how to articulate my thoughts. School officials say there are about 50 staff members currently employed, and unfortunately, all of them will lose their jobs. 655, the south side of Atlanta is growing fast, and today we'll hear new research on how fast and projections for the next few years. That this is the place to be. The technology growth that we're going to have in the city of Atlanta. From the airport to South Fulton, College Park to Fayette County, it is a region growing fast in tech, housing, business, and population. Today is the South Metro Development Outlook. Michael Hightower started the convention 22 years ago. He says changes to the South Side are coming faster than ever. When we started the conference, obviously there was no Porsche, there was no trellis, there was no downtown development in Hapeville, there was no Six West in College Park. So the amount of growth during this time is just unreal. And right now, U.S. soccer is building its new headquarters in Fayetteville. I'm really looking forward to hosting the conference again this year. We'll also be honoring a number of people, including Jay Bailey with the Russell Innovation Center for Entrepreneurs and Jermaine Dupree, who grew up in College Park and went to M.D. Collins High School. Happening today, thousands of Atlantans will now live within a 10-minute walk to a local park. Today, two new park spaces are opening near elementary schools. The initiative expands community access to schoolyards during non-school hours. The latest schools to get park spaces will be Price Middle and Scott Elementary Schools. Two other parks open this week. Well, at noon today, we'll be looking at temperatures getting close to the 60 degree mark. We'll have mostly sunny skies on the outside. It's going to be a beautiful afternoon. In fact, temperatures will be warming up into the 70s for highs for today. Looking at 71 degrees, your afternoon high temperature by 6 o'clock. I think we'll hold it right about there. 70 degrees, fair skies looking great. We'll get another one in here tomorrow. Looking at 73 for your high temperature. Rain comes to us by Friday as those temperatures cool back down a little bit. We'll linger into the early part of our weekend for the latter half of the weekend. Sunday, 68 degrees right where we should be for this time of year with mostly sunny skies. Enjoy. There is a lot of excitement surrounding the Great American Eclipse, which is less than three weeks away. While we won't get to see the full eclipse here in Georgia, DeKalb County is keeping students home. The district announced it will have an independent learning day on April 8th. That means the students and staff will operate from home. The district says the partial view will offer a unique learning opportunity for the students, make for some good conversations and photos and all that. You know, I should have it off. It's my uh, 29th wedding anniversary. Woo! Uh, but I'll probably be here working. 
That's okay. <laughs> that is an eclipse of the heart. Oh, for sure. Uh, Go ahead, Cheryl. That was good. You love a girl. Cab, I probably wouldn't have to work. Got, yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have a great day, everybody. See you back here in the morning.